this talk is about prescribing glasses for children. And uh, please, I know uh, some of you are very good at prescribing glasses for children. And uh, I don't want you to um, misunderstand the intent of my lecture. But for those of you who already uh, know all these things about prescribing glasses for children, you will have a copy of this lecture. And so this will be a useful way for you to teach residents about prescribing glasses for children. This is a lecture that I give every year to the new residents. Every year I give the same lecture. And then on the second year residents, they come back to see it again. The third year, they come back to see it again. So it's good, uh, it's good information, and it's a lot of thinking, so we have to go very slowly. So the pre-questions the pre for you. This is true or false. It is a good idea to decrease the amount of astigmatism prescribed to children on the first visit to promote acceptance of the eyeglasses. This is also true or false. Rather than prescribing from a cycloplegic refraction, children should return. Children should return for a second visit to have a non-cycloplegic subjective refraction. Which is the best for a five-year-old with straight eyes and the following cycloplegic refraction? Okay, good. So the objectives, first, to determine which children need glasses. Second is to obtain all the necessary information to help with the decision making about glasses and to provide the proper eyeglasses which will improve visual acuity, promote binocular vision, and be tolerated by the child. So first, who needs glasses? So of course, Isotropia in the presence of hyperopia, more than plus one or two, we need to give glasses for that. Uh, myopia, a significant amount of myopia after age one or two, we give glasses for that. We want children to see the world. We want them to be able to look far away and not just be involved in things they're holding. So we need to treat myopia after age one or two when the children are walking. Anisometropia, High hyperopia, high astigmatism, we need to treat these conditions early because they have the potential to cause amblyopia. For school-age children, children in school really should see 2025 or 6.9, 6, uh, 7.5. Uh, and in general, that means we treat myopia 0.5 or maybe 0.75 or more, and astigmatism maybe more than 0.75 or maybe more than one diopter of astigmatism, depending on the uh, axis. So what's the required information? Uh, first is um, to determine the uncorrected acuity in each eye. Uh, second is um, to do a cycloplegic refraction with subjective verification. So if you notice, I did not use the word manifest here. Uh, manifest refraction, some people use to mean a subjective refraction, but manifest refraction means without eye drops. So what I use is a cycloplegic refraction with subjective verification. That means the way that I want it expressed is a refraction and a vision. What do they see with the, with the refraction when they're dilated? Now, this also means that uh, I may modify the cycloplegic refraction based on the vision. So let's say that I do my retinoscopy and I find minus one and they're 2030, but then I put minus 1.25 and they're 2020. So I'm gonna say this is minus 1.25 equals 2020. Returning for a post cycloplegic manifest refraction is not needed in children. It's uh, very easy to prescribe from a cycloplegic refraction, not only in the case of hyperopia, but also in the case of myopia. And uh, it's a uh, little bit waste of time to have them come back for uh, another visit. We also need to know the ocular alignment because we need to know 
if uh, the eyes are straight or if they're crossed because that makes a difference in uh, the prescription. So in the case of esotropia, under four years, we give the full cycloplegic hyperopic prescription. We add a plus 250 bifocal for residual esotropia near. And this should be initially in the form of a flat top bifocal with the, the bifocal um, top to bisect the pupil. The older children can wear a progressive uh, multifocal lens if they're doing well with their alignment. After age four, you can de decrease the amount of uh, hyperopic prescription you give uh, based on uh, uh, their alignment. If they tolerate it without becoming esotropic, and it's good to have a little esophoria because that means they're exercising their divergence. Also, if possible, reduce the bifocal after age eight. In the case of exotropia, some people may wish to give a uh, more minus than measure to help control the deviation. But in my opinion, that's just a temporary measure. And uh, for exotropia that is worse at distance, in a myopic patient wearing glasses, that's not controlled, that's a surgical condition. Now in the case, and here I wrote notropia, and in the case where there's the no manifest strabismus, that means a uh, straight eyes, perfectly straight, or esophoria, exophoria, we consider that straight. If the spherical equivalent is minus or plano, zero, if the patient needs glasses, you give the full cycloplegic refraction. If the spherical equivalent is high, high plus, uh, but the eyes are straight, they don't need the full plus. And so I, I reduce the amount by plus 2.5. This is the focus of the lecture, is patients that fall in this category because this is a little bit more complicated decision making. So if the spherical equivalent is mild to moderate hyperopia, which is very, very common in children, then you have a few objectives. Number one, we fully correct astigmatism uh, in each eye. So children need their astigmatism corrected they will tolerate the full correction, maybe not the first day or two, but uh, we want to promote a good vision development, and so there's no reason to reduce the astigmatic correction. Just give it to them and uh, tell the parents to make sure they wear it, and in a few days, they'll be happy with their glasses. So number one, fully correct astigmatism. Number two, do not change the amount the patient is accommodating. So that means if the child is plus one hyperope only, are we going to give glasses for that? No, we're not going to give glasses for plus one hyperopia. We're going to allow them to accommodate. But if the child is um, equivalent sphere plus one, but has some astigmatism, also we don't need to treat the hyperopia. We only need to treat the astigmatism. We can allow them to accommodate one diopter. And so we're going to make pay attention to that. And the reason that we don't want to change the amount the patient is accommodating is because that's one of the factors that affects whether they tolerate the glasses or not. And number three is to fully correct the anisometropia. So this is a, so a big source of mistakes in prescribing glasses for children. You might correct the astigmatism, but one eye is equivalent sphere plus one, and one eye is plus two. You have to correct the anisometropia also. So this is the technique for how to manage this on paper. So first, you copy the cylinder power and axis in each eye. And we're going to fully correct the astigmatism. So copy the cylinder power and axis. Number two is determine the dominant eye if possible. And the reason for this is the dominant eye is the one that controls the accommodation. So. You can measure ocular dominance, you can measure with pointing, or you can measure with a, which, with a worth four dot and see what color the bottom is, or you can measure with a circle, but it's much more practical to guess because most of the time you'll guess right. If you see the prescription and one eye has um, a lot more astigmatism than the other, the better eye is generally the dominant eye. So you uh, 
will, if you, and if you make a wrong decision in ocular dominance, you might give a different prescription, but you won't give a wrong prescription. When I said before that we don't want to change the amount that the patient is accommodating, so the way to do that is to prescribe for the dominant eye a lens that has a spherical equivalent of zero. That way you're not changing the accommodation. And then, in order to correct the anisometropia, we need to make sure that we've reduced each eye the same amount from the cycloplegic refraction. So let's look at some examples, okay? So here's an example of a child whose right eye measures plus 150, left eye plus 350, 2020 right and 2025 left. So the prescription will be, what, what, what is the problem here? Why do we need to give glasses here? We need to give glasses because anisometropia. So, but we don't need to give the full plus because the eyes are straight. So we give a prescription of Plano in the right eye and plus two in the left eye. So this is easy. I think everybody agrees on this. This is very easy to look and calculate. Now here's another uh, another easy example. Okay, this is a child. The assumption is the eyes are straight. Refraction is the same in both eyes. Plus two minus one axis 180 for 2020. And if we decide that we're going to treat this small amount of astigmatism, then what prescription do we give? We don't need to give the full plus, so we don't give the cycloplegic refraction. It would be wrong to cover up the plus and uh, just give Plano minus one. That was a, that's very tempting. That's often the prescription that people give. But then what are you doing? Uh, is this patient hyperopic or is this patient myopic? And this patient is hyperopic. So 1.5 equivalent sphere. So it's a hyperopic patient and uh, if you give Plano minus 1, then what's the equivalent sphere of that lens? It's minus 0.5. So then you'd be giving a minus lens to a hyperopic patient. We wouldn't do that. So in order to correct only the astigmatism, we need to give the lens that has equivalent sphere of 0. So it's plus 50 minus 1 axis 180. So it's half the cylinder and of the opposite power. Now here's the same example but it's in plus cylinder form. How many people use plus cylinder? And how many people use minus cylinder? So, so, and sometimes you use different in different places. So, let's look at it in uh, plus cylinder form, okay? It's the same case. This patient is hyperopic, plus 1.5. And we're gonna treat the astigmatism. But we don't want to change the amount that the patient is accommodating, so we want to give a lens that has equivalent sphere of zero. So that lens would be minus 50 plus 1. Now this looks funny, doesn't it? Because the prescription starts with a plus, but your, your, the refraction, but your prescription starts with a minus. But really this is a zero lens. Still, you're just treating astigmatism. So don't feel funny about it. Okay, so now, Here's a little bit more complicated prescription. The cycloplegic refraction is here. So in this uh, case that's a little bit more complex, then uh, we follow the steps. The steps are copy the cylinder power and axis for each eye. So I did that in both, in both sides. And this is in the event the right eye is dominant, and this is in the event the left eye is dominant, okay? I think the right eye would be dominant in this patient. So the next step is it, to give a lens in the dominant eye that has equivalent sphere of zero. So that would be plus 175 minus 350. Do we all agree on that? Okay. So that's how we don't change the amount the patient's accommodating. And the third objective is to fully correct the anisometropia. How do we do that? We do that by reducing 
the sphere the same amount in each eye. We went from 2 to 1.75, so therefore we have to go from 3 to 2.75. For me, this is the best prescription for the patient. Okay, now suppose you felt for some reason the, the left eye is dominant, then if you do this calculation, the prescription comes out a little different. In this case, we start with a, the same thing, and if the left eye is dominant, we give a lens whose spherical equivalent is zero, so plus two, minus four, axis 165, but now if you look, you had to reduce one diopter from three to two, so therefore you should reduce one diopter in the right eye from two to one. Now this is the same example in plus cylinder form. So again, copy the power and axis of the astigmatism. Next is choose a prescription that, uh, choose a lens for the dominant eye that has equivalent sphere of zero. So that is minus 175 plus 350. And then look and see how did we change. So we went from 150 to minus 175. So we have to go a quarter minus in the left eye from minus one to minus 1.25. And then a similar calculation for the plus cylinder form. And you notice that the prescription is uh, minus 2 plus 4 if the left eye is the dominant eye. Question. Why we reduce uh, 0.25 in case of right dominant and why we reduce minus 1 for in case of left dominant? Oh, because um, the dominant eye is the one that controls the accommodation for the patient. That's the one they're thinking about. And so we want to prescribe equivalent sphere of zero in the dominant eye. So if the left eye is dominant eye, we need spherical equivalent zero is minus two plus four. And that's simply because there's more astigmatism. In the case of the right eye dominance, it's a 350 cylinder, so we need 175. That's the reason because of more cylinder. So the objectives, to determine who, which children require eyeglasses, uh, to obtain all the necessary information for proper eyeglass prescription, and to provide the proper eyeglasses to improve visual acuity, promote binocular vision, and to be tolerated by the patient. So post questions. Okay, number one, it's a good idea to decrease the amount of astigmatism prescribed to children on the first visit to promote acceptance of the glasses. Vote. This is to say, true means that we should reduce the amount of astigmatism so they'll be more comfortable in the glasses, and false means that we should give the full astigmatism correction without reduction. Oh good, so we had a little reversal there, that's good. Rather than prescribing from a cycloplegic refraction, children should return for a second visit to have a non-cycloplegic subjective refraction. For me, the answer is no. Children don't need to come back for a post-cycloplegic refraction. I think it's a, a wasted visit. I think you can prescribe, once you develop that technique, I think you can prescribe from the cycloplegic refraction. And uh, number three, which is best for a five-year-old with straight eyes and the following cycloplegic refraction. Oh, very good, that's really good. That's the correct answer, very good. Thank you.